Welcome! I am excited to show you how I used all of these backgrounds featuring Stampin' Up! embossing paste to create all of these fun cards and more using these fun supplies. You're going to find most of them on page 201 in the newest 2017-2018 Stampin' Up! catalog. We have the party pattern decorative masks. Those are right here. We have the embossing paste right here. We have the palette knives right here. Then if you flip the page over to 203, you're going to find the craft silicone sheet, which I have under here. A couple of other supplies I found very handy was baby wipes, washi tape, and I'm actually using up some retired washi tape. This is a great use if you have some left over. A pair of tweezers, either craft tweezers or just an extra pair of tweezers. You'll need some reinkers if you want to make your embossing paste a different color because it comes in white. You'll also, of course, need some cardstock. So let's get started and let me show you how to make these fun backgrounds. For our first example, let's use the brick pattern stencil. I found this to be one of the easiest ones to create with. So if you're just starting an embossing paste is a new technique to you, you might want to start with this one or this one that creates this fun little diamond pattern. We'll do that one next, but right now I'm going to use the bricks. And I just wanted to show you, depending on what color cardstock you use and what color reinkers you use to color your paste, you can see that you get a very different look. Here are three of the cards I created. So this one, for all of them, for the bricks, I mixed Cherry Cobbler and Cajun Craze reinker with the white paste to create the bricks. So the bricks were all done the same way. But you can see how different they look when you do this mm -hmm. on different colors of cardstock. I just loved embellishing them in different ways. This one has a prettier garden feel with the flowers. These two have fall leaves, and I'm going to show you how I made those leaves in a minute, but more of a fall, more dramatic look. And one thing, just before I demonstrate this for you, I just want to show you a really neat difference. I created these the same way, put the embossing paste on vanilla cardstock, and on this one, after the paste dried, I did a watercolor wash with crumb cake ink and my aqua painter, and then I splattered some little speckles with the early espresso marker. And so you can see how it gives you a really neat distressed look. In person, it's really cool. Not sure how it's coming across on the camera, but that's just an option too. There are so many things that you can do after you've actually created your background. So let's go ahead and create this background. I have a piece of crumb cake cardstock and my silicone mat, and I'm going to put my brick mask on top. And if you want your bricks straight, then it's important to get it lined up. And this is where you would want to use some washi tape or painter's tape or removable tape or something that's going to hold your template down, your stencil. So I just have a couple pieces of washi tape. And like I said, I like to use the retired washi tape for that. Now I have my embossing paste. And this comes in a handy little carton. I'm going to grab my second silicone mat here so that I have a place to mix up the color. Now I have already made about 45 different card fronts like this, and I still have about a quarter of my paste left. You can use one of the knives to scoop out some paste and put it over here on your other mat. Now you don't need a lot, especially if you're just doing one card front. You can see that's just a little dollop there. 
It's important to go ahead and seal up your jar because you don't want this to dry out. This is a paste. It's a glue and it will dry. Now depending on how much paste you are using, that will determine how much reinker you want. You don't want to water it down too much. So I'm just doing two, just barely, that might have even been too much. We might need to add a little more paste. My personal preference was to work with this knife. With the angle of my hand, this motion here was the most comfortable for me. You'll want to experiment with the three palette knives that come in that set and decide which one you like. So you can see I'm just mixing it up. Super simple. And then you can use the palette knife to just scrape the product right off your silicone mat. And then you're just going to drag it across. And I really liked this look, you can see here, where it's just sort of partial. I, I didn't have the whole thing to look like a brick wall. I just wanted sort of just a fun, partial pattern. And so I'm pushing the product down through the stencil, but then I'm also just kind of evening it out and wiping it off. You can leave it very thick if you prefer, or you can do what I just did and just sort of even it off. Now you want to grab one of your wet wipes, your baby wipes, and clean off your palette knife. I did find that the Berry Burst did some staining, but it does not affect the rest of the procedure. So just as long as you get any of the wet paste off of there. And then you'll want to wipe off your mat and it wipes off really easily. Okay, now we're ready to peel this up. And the big reveal, it's so fun when you actually see your finished efforts. Isn't that cool? I love the way this one came out with all these just sort of partial bricks. Isn't that cool? So that's as easy as this is. I think it's amazing. What you'll want to do next is to be sure to clean off your mask. You could take this to the sink and rub it with a sponge or your fingers and some mild dish soap. Since I am just here on camera with you, I'm showing you an alternative. You can also clean it off with your baby wipes and then be sure to lift up and clean this silicone mat as well as the underside of your stencil. So that was as simple as it is to create bricks. Again, you could have mixed up a little more paste and you could cover the entire front of your project if you wish. This seems to take about 10 to 15 minutes to dry. Right now I'm filming this, it's almost summertime, a little bit warmer weather, so it is drying fairly quickly. And of course that will depend on your area and your climate. So these were three of the cards I created, and I wanted to show you just quickly that the leaves were created by making my own stencil. I'm trying to get this to reflect, there you go, so that you can see that. So I just die cut the leaves in a window sheet, and then I used it as my stencil on top of the Color Theory paper, and I mixed up about four different colors, and I put the, um, the leaves on there with the stencil and the palette knife. Now my intent was I was going to use these pieces that I made as the card itself, but then I thought, well, on one of them, I'm going to die cut those. So these are actually die cut leaves with the paste and so if you feel them they feel like suede or leather or they're really cool they were created with the seasonal layers framelits thinlets so this leaf and this leaf and then i also die cut right here you can see the outline and put it on top of a couple of them just because i thought that gave it a really neat look 
Next up, let's look at how easy it is to create backgrounds with this mask. I'm going to call it a diamond pattern. I really like it. And I used the Lemon Lime Twist ink to do all three of these backgrounds. Look how interesting and how fun on different colors. White cardstock, black cardstock, and very burst cardstock. Isn't that fun how different it looks? Let's look at some of the cards I created and all the different designs. So this one is in the background, this diamond pattern, and it's just on the powder pink cardstock, very soft and muted card with the ribbon of courage, ribbon and the sentiment. And then you can go very different. Here I did artichoke and I did soft suede ink mixed with the embossing paste and the coffee sweet. So I used the various pieces of the coffee paper and stamp set and dies to create yet again a really different look. And then this is the cute Celebrate You set. Isn't this fun? I knew this would be one of the first things on my list. I absolutely love it. But I just love that fun background that the embossing paste and the diamond pattern gave with that as well as the Berry Burst Lemon Lime Twist black and white color combo. Very striking. And then lastly, here are two samples I created with that same background and with flowers. So just really fun different looks all with this same background. So let's get started and I'll show you how quickly this one works. I have my stencil taped down on top of my silicone mat with my paper and just like we did with the bricks we're just going to scoop out some product and put it on the mat and just scrape the extra back in. And remember to close your jar and wipe off your palette knife so it doesn't get stuck on there because like the name says it's paste, it's embossing paste. So then let's do about a drip and a half <laughs> of the lemon lime twist and then we'll just mix this up. Isn't that fun and vibrant? Love this color. And what I'm going to do on this one is just do sort of a partial over on this side because then I want to show this to you on the black as well. Okay, so we have some lemon lime twist. Oh, and here's where the, I found the tweezers handy. Just to sort of hang on to that and then pull it out of there. I just found that a handy thing to have. So fun background. Now let's slip a piece of basic black in there and I'll show you how really super cool it is on black. We came undone a little bit here. Let's fix that. And so then the black and the lemon lime twist is an awesome combination. And don't ever let your product go to waste. See how much is on there still? So I can just keep going and fill in more of this pattern. Because you don't want to toss that and just wipe it off on the baby wipe. And if you have enough, just put one more piece of cardstock in there and do one more. So again, I just want to mention that this particular knife felt the most comfortable to me. I tried spreading it with these two and it just the angle of my hand, it just didn't feel comfortable. I found it better to use those for scooping the product out of the jar and for, um, you could mix it with those as well. But that just, it didn't work for me to do the spreading on the project. And we'll just lift this one up and grab it with our tweezers. And voila! Super cool! Isn't that beautiful? I just love these. I am such a fan of this lemon lime twist. This is so fun. And so once more, I'll just show you a couple of the samples. There's the lemon lime twist on the white. 
and the lemon lime twist on the very burst and the lemon lime twist on the black. So that just gives you an idea of mixing up one color and using it for three very different cards. I hope you're finding these tips helpful. If you would like to shop for any of these items, you can go to my blog at pattystamps.com and click any of the shop online buttons. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can check below in the links and description of this video and it will take you right to the correct blog post with more information. This medallion stencil you can see is quite large. This is a quarter sheet of cardstock cardstock so you can see that it's pretty big. You can't actually fit this onto a regular card. So I decided to do partial images with this. On this one I mixed crushed curry ink and did the stenciling onto the white cardstock. On this one I just did white paste right onto Night of Navy. And let me show you the two cards that I came up with using that. So this one is the white paste on the Knight of Navy and I used some of the Eastern Medallion stickers but I used the other side so they're gold when you take them out of the package but if you flip them over and die cut them you can use them to show the silver side and then I embellished with silver embellishments the new ribbon punch, new silver edged ribbon, new silver trim. So I just did sort of an elegant white and silver look on that one. And then for the yellow one, the crushed curry, I added a punched out daisy and some of the daisy paper and the fun gingham ribbon for just a total fun look. So two very different looks out of that medallion background stencil. Our last stencil is the cloud stencil and I created this fun beach scene so it's a little hard to see on here but you can see the clouds on this background paper this is from the naturally eclectic package and there's this beautiful piece that almost is like a big watercolor wash on the whole piece and I just thought ooh, that's such a neat kind of a sky dramatic scene and so when I put the paste on I did not do it evenly but I did that on purpose because you know how clouds are like fluffy and they have lights and darks and so that was my uh, attempt here to make clouds that were just sort of fluffy and I don't know if I succeeded, but I liked it anyway. And then I added the Adirondack chair from the Seasonal Layers. And this is the new Starburst Punch. I just punched out some cardstock and sponged the edges and then cut it for the sun. And I thought this was clever. I wanted to show you what I did for the sand. On a piece of Sahara sand cardstock, I stamped the top of the sheltering tree image in soft suede ink on top of the crumb cake cardstock and I just did it over and over and over and over till there wasn't any more ink left and I thought that was kind of a fun look for sand kind of a speckly look so that um, you might have seen this before that I did on the flamingo card and this water image is in the flamingo stamp set so that created the nice look of water there in my beach card. I hope you feel inspired and equipped to go out and use your Stampin' Up! embossing paste to create fun backgrounds and craft projects. I hope these samples gave you a few ideas. If you need any help or have questions, please leave me a comment or contact me so that I can help you with your order or your creating. Have a great day!